Hey everyone, uh, welcome back. We are going to talk about counting techniques today, and you might be thinking to yourself, I know how to count. Um, and of course you do, but uh, we're going to do a little bit more sophisticated ways of doing that. Um, I want to start out here uh, with some practice. How many meals are possible? You can choose an appetizer, entree, or dessert, and there are three available appetizers, two entrees, and two available desserts. We're going to do a tree diagram to sort of outline this. First off, I get to pick three appetizers. And here we have our three potential appetizers. And then from there, each one gets to choose an entree. This is called a sample space, those of you who don't know that. Uh, next up, each of those gets to choose one of two desserts. It's going to get crowded here in a second. You don't always have to write this out, but it can be useful to have an idea of what we have. So let me write them out. So we have entree or appetizer one, entree one, dessert one. Appetizer one, entree one, dessert two. So I'm just going along here and along here. And now I'm going to go appetizer two. So appetizer, I'm sorry, appetizer sub one, entree sub two, dessert one. Appetizer one, entree two, dessert two. So we've done all four of the appetizer one. Appetizer two, we have entree one, dessert one. Appetizer two, entree one, dessert two. Appetizer two, entree two, dessert one. Appetizer two, entree two, dessert two. So that's all of entree, or appetizer two. The last, we have appetizer three, entree one, dessert one. Appetizer three, entree one, dessert two. Appetizer three, entree two, dessert one. And appetizer three, entree two, dessert two. This is my entire sample space for this particular scenario. This is everything. And I want to know how many we have here. We have six here and six here, a total of 12 meals. So maybe we're on a cruise ship or something. So as we look at the sample space and we count them up, there's got to be a more efficient way of doing this, and there is. That brings us to the multiplication rule of counting. And when it says when we have uh, P selections and Q selections, and the two are independent of one another, uh, then we just multiply them together. So in this case, that's going to be 3 times 2 times 2. So 3 appetizers, 3 entrees, and 3 desserts, which gives us a total, again, of 12 meals, which is obviously a lot less work than writing it all out like we did up here. Let's do some more practice. So a woman has 4 skirts, 3 blouses. How many different skirt-blouse combinations can she wear? Well, that's going to be 4 times 3, or 12 suit combinations. You've been hired as a representative of Cypress College. You must travel to four local high schools to introduce yourself to the first day of school. Well, I'm going to draw this one out for a second. So here's Cypress College, and we have school one, school two, school three, and school four. And we want to know how many different ways that we can go. Well, one possible route is one, two, four, and three. Another one could be start at four, go to one, then go to three, then go to two. So you can see this is just going to get super, super convoluted. So what I want to do is come up with a more efficient way of writing this out. Well, when I'm at Cyprus and I want to leave, 
Initially, I have four choices. But after I've made the one choice, after that, I now have three choices. And after that, I have two choices, and then one choice. Which gives us four times three times two times one, which is 24 routes. I apologize for some of the noises in here. I'm in my office, and it can get a little noisy. Same thing with this last one. How many ways can a musician plan on performing five different pieces of music for a concert, and it's not repeated? Well, once again, we have first, we have five choices, then four, then three, then two, then one, which gives us five times four, and I can certainly type this up, five times four times three times two times one, which gives us 120 uh, concerts. And that brings us to the big one. This is a, called a factorial. Um, I, we use the exclamation point for that, and it means exactly this. So 5 factorial would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and so on. 4 factorial would be here, and we would write it like this. This is 4 factorial, and this is 5 factorial. And I'd like to show you in your calculator how to find the factorial button. So for the TI, you're going to go to... Uh, you're going to go to math, which is down here, and then we're going to go to the probability option, and there's your factorial. The problem is you have to hit the 5 first and then dig it out. So math, probability, factorial. There it is there. And let me pull up the Casio folk. If you have a Casio, you're going to hit option. Let's see what that is. Option. Then you're going to go to more options and probability. The nice thing about this is you don't have to hit the 5 first. Now I can hit 5 factorial and just keep going. And Cassio, leave it on the screen here. You don't have to dig it out like the TI do does. So let's do some practice. So for 6 factorial, so it's going to be 6 math, back it up, factorial. It's going to give us 720. Ten factorial is a big number, obviously. Three six two eight eight zero zero. Three million six hundred twenty-eight thousand eight hundred. Twenty factorial is going to be even bigger. You can see this is going to get really large really fast. So this is actually 2.43 times 10 to the 18th power. So that means I'm going to move that decimal 18 places. I'm not going to write that number down, but you're welcome to. Now the 70 factorial is going to break my calculator because it's an overflow. So it, it, it can't handle that. So these uh, computers that we're using um, can work um, up to a certain point. Let's move on to some counting where repetition is allowed. So three letter codes are assigned to represent airport locations. Letters may be repeated. How many uh, airport codes are possible? That's like LAX, JFK, or, uh, this is what they mean by that. So there are three letters that we get, and each one, because we can repeat, there are 26 options, because there's 26 in our alphabet. So this is just 26 to the third power. I got 17,576. Let's do another one. The lock shown consists of four digits, and on each ring there are actually ten digits, right? Zero to nine makes up ten. So if we are uh, picking this and repetition is allowed, then that means that we have ten times ten times ten times ten, or ten to the fourth. 10,000 different combinations. And I should put up here airports. A few more. The local area network requires eight letters for uh, names. Lower and upper cases are uh, the, considered the same. That's not in our world today, but we're going to pretend like it is for now. How many usernames are possible? Well, 
for each one, each letter, that's 26 times 26 times 26, eight times. And that's going to be a massive number. So I'm not going to write that out, but you can see that I'm going to have to move that decimal point 11 spaces. A few more. So uh, we have a three-cylinder combination lock with 40. And um, if you've ever had one of these, you know how they work. You turn to the right, then the left, then the right. And what we're going to do here is we're going to have 40 choices for each one. And there's three cylinders, giving us 64,000 combinations. And then they, they tack on. If you randomly uh, guess each of these three numbers, what's the probability of guessing it? Well, that's going to be one chance out of 64,000. This is what we call a very low probability. So here we are counting without repetition. Straighten those out. And here we have three members of a 10 member committee who are going to be chosen. And the first one is going to be the president, second one the vice president, and the third one the secretary. So since there's only three positions and there are 10 choices at first, we're going to have part of the factorial. After all, that first president has been chosen, then the vice president is chosen, and then the secretary. And each time one is chosen, there's one less person to do. So this becomes 10 times 9 times 8, or 720. Uh, combinations. And then a, a similar one here is how many three-letter words can we make from the word words uh, if they may not be repeated? And again, they don't have to be real words. This is just reordering the, the, the letters here. So that's going to be start with five, then four, then three, because there are five, one, two, three, four, five to start out with. And once you pick one, then there's only four left and so on. So 20 times three is 60. get to the good stuff. All right. So here, we're going to have a little fun. We are going to have these four animals compete in a race. That's this part up here. And there's first place and second place. And I'm going to call this one K for kangaroo, P for possum, D for dog, and A for anteater. And so we're going to list all of the possible first instances. So in this case, if the kangaroo comes in first and the possum second, that's different than the possum coming in first and the kangaroo second. So in this, this case, the order really matters. So I'm going to write these out. The kangaroo and the possum, the kangaroo and the dog, the kangaroo and the anteater. Then we have the possum and the kangaroo, the possum and the dog, the possum and the anteater. Then we have the dog the kangaroo, the dog and the possum, the dog and the anteater. And lastly, we have the anteater and the kangaroo, the anteater and the possum. These are all different combinations because the order matters, the anteater and the dog. And how many are there total? Four by three. There's going to be 12 outcomes. Now, Notice that K comma P is different than P comma K because th in this case the possum came in first, in this case the kangaroo came in first, so they're considered different. That's different now compared to our second scenario here. Now we're going to adopt two of them, but the order doesn't matter. If I pick the possum first or the kangaroo first, it does not matter. It's the same combination. So we're not going to repeat in this case. So the combinations are the kangaroo and the possum, the kangaroo and the dog, the kangaroo and the anteater. Then we have the possum and the dog. I'm not going to include the possum and the, and the kangaroo like I did up here because that's the same in this case. The possum and the anteater. And then the last one is going to be the dog and the anteater. And you'll notice that this only has six outcomes. Now, be careful. It's not always half. It's not what that means. Uh, it just happened to work out that way in this case. But you can see when the order matters, it's very different than when the order doesn't matter. And that brings us to our permutations and combinations, which is our next topic.
So we are here talking about combinations. Combinations by definition, the order does not matter. That's the big deal here. And here's the notation. And you'll often hear us say um, n choose r. You, you definitely will hear me say that. That's how I did it. Sometimes the notation can be written as n choose r this way. But the definition is n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. And again, this is when the order does not matter. And the cool thing is that's how lotteries work. I'd like to show you where your combination button is in the calculator. So if you go to math once again and to probability, you can see your combination there. So when we do the lottery, there are 52 and you're choosing six without replacement and the order does not matter. So it even says explicitly. It won't always say explicitly. You have to kind of think about it in some cases. So this is going to be 52, choose 6. And once again, I have to type in the 52 first. Uh, Casio, you don't have to do anything. It's right there. So 52, choose 52, choose 6. There it is. TI, you're going to have to dig it out each time. So you're going to have to go math, probability, choose, and then 6. And that gives us a massive number, 20,358,520 to 1 are your probability of winning, so quite low. Uh, the next one says a school committee of 18 members, uh, five will be chosen to serve on a subcommittee to study human rights. Now, it doesn't say that the first one's going to be the president and the second one or anything like that, so in this case, again, the order does not matter. So this is going to be 18, choose 5. Eighty-five, sixty-eight, and TI, math, no, I'm not going to do that, 18 first, and math, and then the 5. Now this is versus permutations. Permutations, the order does matter, so it's an ordered arrangement. So this is like the the first one is a president, the second one is a vice president, or uh, first place, second place. That, that's when the order matters. So this is NPR, and its definition is N factorial divided by N minus R factorial. But once again, we're going to have this do the work for us. So Scott has put together uh, an exercise routine and feels that the sequence of exercises can affect his overall performance. He has 12 exercises to select from, but only has enough time to do nine. How many different exercise routines? What this means is uh, Scott believes that if he goes running first and push-ups second and uh, sit-ups third, that's different than doing sit-ups first, then the run, then the push-ups. So he's saying that the order in this case really does matter. So this is going to be 12 permutation 9. If I remember right, this is quite a large number. 12. Now permutation, that's number 2 here. In the same place that we've been doing. Nine. Ooh. So that's seven, two, six, four, eight, five, seven, six, zero. Let's see what that looks like as far as a number. 726 million and so on uh, routines. How many ways can six people be chosen and arranged in a straight line if there are eight to choose from? So again, the sitting in front of or sitting behind someone is different, so the order does matter in that case. So that's going to be 8 permutation 6, 20,160 arrangements. And lastly, uh, there are seven books in the Harry Potter series. Um, how many ways are there to read the books? Now, we can actually do this one two different ways. This is 7 permutation 7, which actually turns out to be 7 factorial. Uh, because we're reading all the books. We're not choosing only three of them or something. So, once again, 7 permutation 7 
times the 50 40. Uh, ways to read. Um, you'll do some exercises. Distinguishing between them can get a little tricky sometimes, so make sure you do that practice. Over to our last page. And the question is, what happens if we end up with some repeats? Well, I want to take this piece of paper and write out my name, which is Kevin. And you'll notice that, how many ways can I rearrange my name? Well, there are five letters, and they are all distinct letters. That's going to be five factorial, which is 120 ways. My wife's name, she's from Japan, Mutsuno, has two U's. Do you see if I switch these two U's? It's the same name. So when we get repeats like that, we're going to have to come up with a way to uh, fix that, because I don't want to double count any of those combinations as we're looking at them. So we end up with, the ways that we can rearrange this is going to be n factorial divided by all the repeats factorial. as many as are needed. So let's practice this a little bit. So we have six digits. How many ways can we arrange them? And you'll notice the, the ordering does matter because uh, two, three, four, five, six, seven is a totally different number than seven, six, five, four, three, two, and so on. So how many ways can we arrange them? Well, since there's no repeats, it's just going to be, and there are six letters, because there's no one, this is going to be six factorial. Once again, six factorial. 6 factorial is 720 numbers. However, here we have repeats. So there are 6 numbers. So it's 6 factorial divided by how many 4s are there? There are 2. How many 5s are there? There are 3. How many 7s are there? There's 1. Now 1 factorial is just 1, so we don't need to worry about that so much. But I want to show you how I'm going to put this in my, in my calculator. This is going to be 6 factorial divided by, and I'm going to use parentheses, 2 factorial times 3 factorial. Make sure you use your parentheses correctly. So in this case, there's only 60 combinations. And you can see that's significantly different, because uh, once again, if I rearrange those two fours and swap them out, that's the exact same number as if I, I didn't do that. Same with the fives. I can rearrange them a whole bunch of different ways. Even when they're spread out, I can still swap them out. And they're the same number. So it really drops the number down. So arrangements of uh, flags. Put that there. And here, the flags are, there's eight flags, and they're all different color in this first one. That means it's going to be eight factorial, which is... 40,320. You can certainly verify that with your calculator. However, now these flags have repeats. So that's going to be 8 factorial over 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial. And again, I'm going to use my parentheses as I do this. So 8 factorial divided by 3 factorial times 2 factorial times 3 factorial. Close give me 560 arrangements. And you can see there's a large difference in these two numbers here. I'm going to let you try this one on your own, and uh, I hope that that helped out, and uh, see you on the